Alright guys, so another way to make a service is just to inherit directly from the service class. And it's a little bit different than an intent service and by the time you understand everything about services, you're going to learn when to use each one and the benefits of each. But for right now, let me show you guys how to do this. So if you right click your package and select new service and then just choose a regular service not intent service then what this is going to do, we'll just keep the default name for now is it's going to give you a file that again inherits directly from the service class now before I show you guys how to make this let me just go ahead and Android util dot log just set up all my log messages stuff so I'm going to put it right above the constructor that variable private static Final probably just should have just copied this string tag and set it equal to this. All right, and we probably should go to our filter and make sure that everything is set up properly. So now we can essentially print out log messages. So the first thing I want to show you guys is this. By default it gives you two methods and this is you always need these methods whenever you're using this type of service the constructor and we really don't need to do anything in the constructor right now so we can just leave it like there no code necessary. Another thing is it gives you this method right here now there's actually another type of service called a bound service and I'll probably teach that in the next tutorial but for right now all we can do is we can actually just return null right here because this tutorial is not going to be a bound service and what those are and how to use them not really important right now because right now I'm just going to show you guys how to create a generic service All right, let me adjust right here and after this constructor what I want to do is I want to override a few methods so go to alt insert override methods and the first thing I want is on start command now essentially whenever we start our service we're gonna put the code of what we want a service to do in here so this is pretty much the meat of it inside here is whatever you want your service to do now another thing I want to do is I want to inherit on destroy and this is going to be called whenever your service of course is destroyed easy stuff right there so I'm just going to print out a log message on destroy so you guys can see when it's getting called so log dot i tag and I'll just write something like on destroy um, is method called something like that all right looking good so now let's go to on start command and we can actually just delete all of that so again this is when your service starts so whenever it starts of course you want it to do something now just to demonstrate a few things the first thing I'm going to do is just print out when this command is being called so then in the little lock section we can see when it's happening and another thing that I want to do is this so again remember a service is just a process that runs in the background and the user doesn't interact with it at all it doesn't have an interface or anything like that now the proper usage of a service allows for the user to continue using their phone while whatever happens in the background just happens unknown to the user so what we need to do to make that happen is we need to take whatever code is in our service and stick it inside a new thread. Now the reason that we didn't do that in the last tutorial with the Bucky's intent service is because an intent service it makes its own thread automatically. That's how Android is set up. However, it doesn't on this type of service inheriting directly from the service class, but we get some other benefits as well as we'll see later. So of course, we already know how to make threads runnable r equals new runnable and sweet so make sure to throw that in there now of course in run 
is what you want to do. So all I'm going to do for this little example is I'm going to make a loop and this is going to be real stupid by the way. Just set i equal to zero and we'll say like i is less than five and i plus plus. So again this loop is just going to um, loop five. Actually let's go ahead. Well it's good enough for right now. So right now I'm just going to pretty much just wait just like we did before. And I probably should just go get the code for my other tutorial, but too lazy to do that. So we can recap. So system dot current time millis and we'll just add 5 seconds to it. So that's 5000 milliseconds equals 5 seconds. And now we can just make a little while loop. So while the current time is less than the future time, then what do we want to do? Synchronize this. All right, so we finally get to the good stuff. So all we're going to do is we're going to try to, um, all right, let's just wait. So we're just going to wait like before. And we're going to take that future time and subtract the current time. And why is it giving me an error? And it is because I didn't catch my exceptions. Exception E. All right, so after this waits, I should probably print out a little log message too, so you guys can see what's going on. So all this log message is gonna say is, I don't know, service is doing something. All right, so this service is pretty dumb. The only thing it's doing is it's waiting for five seconds, five different times in a row, and it's just gonna print out service is doing something. But of course, you would wanna put some code in here, like downloading images or checking a database for whatever you want to happen. But now that it's stuck on a new thread, it's not gonna interfere with whatever else the user wants to do on your app, like changing screens, clicking buttons, playing the game, whatever. So now that we have this background process set up, the only other thing we need to do is kick off this thread. So I'm just gonna name my Bucky's thread. And of course you set it equal to new thread. Holy moly, thread. And what was our object, R. So this R is the code that we want, inside, want to run inside the thread. So now we just need to start it, so start. And of course, since all of this code is going on the on start command, we need, or excuse me, the on start method, we need to return something. Now, just return this. If you call service dot start sticky, as you can see, it was the first thing that popped up. There is, I, th I believe it's start sticky and all right, start sticky and start not sticky. So what start sticky means is you don't really need to worry about it that much, but if your service ever gets destroyed by the Android operating system for any reason, then start sticky just means restart the service. And if you call start non, not sticky, then the service is not going to be restarted if it ever gets destroyed. So again, not really important right now, just remember to return service start sticky. Now the last thing we actually need to do, one little itty bitty line of code, is on your apples, we need to say, okay, you created a service, but when do you want to start running this service? Well, I'm just going to put it right here on on create because I don't know, I don't want to do anything too fancy. And just like anything else, make a new intent. New intent with this, and what was it? Pass in the name of that class where your service is. And as you know, to start a service, you just start service I. So whenever this Apple's activity is going to get created, which we are going to do right now, it's going to start that service. And all this service is going to do... Actually, what I would like to do is go to my log cat. Make sure we're on Bucky's filter. And again, like I was saying, all this service is going to do is wait and print out something 
However, it's going to be running in the background, which is really cool. So there you have it. Check it out. Their service is working. Service is doing something. I can click, continue to interact with my app, and it doesn't interfere with the user experience at all. Pretty stinking awesome. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you create a service manually from inheriting from the service class. And remember, whenever you do so, you should really stick your code inside a thread and it's going to create an awesome user experience for your customer. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.